Welcome back guys. Today's a video I've wanted to do for a very long time. I'm teaching you guys how to edit fishing photos. We're using Adobe Lightroom, very powerful program. Lightroom uses presets, just like Instagram uses presets. They're different color profiles. A lot of places you can buy different preset packages. You can get them online. Today, I'm giving away my five favorite presets absolutely free. Zero cents. That's it. There'll be a download link below. And with those presets, you'll get a great starting point on editing photos. I'm going to teach you guys today how they work and how to use them. Before we get too deep into this, I want you guys to know this is not going to be the advanced how to use Lightroom. This is going to be beginners. If you have never edited a photo before, this tutorial is for you. Lightroom is pretty much like a stripped down version of Photoshop. It is very user friendly and using presets, it's a great way to take a good photo and turn it into a great photo. Um, I subscribe to something called the Adobe Creative Cloud. It is a subscription. I get all the Adobe programs, including Photoshop, um, Premiere Pro, where I edit all my videos in, and Lightroom. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna open up Lightroom and create a catalog. So. Catalogs are the system that Lightroom operates with. Basically, I use a catalog for each shoot and it contains all of those photos. When you edit, it's something called non-destructive editing. So when I'm changing that photo, I am not wrecking the original. It's putting a preset on top of it. I can do my tweaks, but that original photo will never get damaged. So it is very important to stay organized with this. We're gonna start by importing the presets. So before we get started, you're gonna to wanna to download the presets and the photos below, then you can follow along. These presets are not a one-click fix-all, but it'll get you pretty dang close, and it's just a good starting point if you're new to Lightroom. So we're gonna go Lightroom, import, develop profiles and presets. We're gonna click on that. Then we're gonna find the presets that you downloaded. Thrive Visuals presets, there's five of them. You're gonna select them all and click import. If you're watching this video in three months, six months, five years from now, and that import process did not work, do not be afraid to go into YouTube and to search how to import presets. Lightroom's always changing and you wanna make sure you have the most recent version and they might have changed the import process. But the presets will stay the same. Next step, we're importing the photos. So there's a couple different ways to import the photos. On the left here, you're gonna see a bar that's gonna load shortly. It's gonna say select a source. And on the right, it's gonna be where the photos end up. So there you can see from and to. That is very important because if you put your SD card in, that's where it's gonna be, and you're gonna to wanna to move it to your hard drive. Typically, you're not gonna to wanna to keep your pictures on the SD card. So you can move them, like coming back from a shoot, I put my memory card in, I'm gonna move them to my hard drive, and in the process, it's gonna add them to the catalog. In this situation, the photos are already where I want them on the hard drive, so I'm not gonna worry about moving them. I'm just gonna open them up, J. Siemens, desktop, photos, and as you can see, it says add. I'm not gonna do move, I'm not gonna do copy, it's just gonna be add, I'm gonna click import, and now all my photos are in. The next step we're gonna do, and I'm not gonna go too in depth with this, but it's called culling. It is the same way you cull fish, you keep the good ones, you throw away the bad ones. So I'm gonna double click on the photo, and we're gonna do the culling process. I'm just gonna press the right arrow, I'm gonna flip through, and this photo I like, so I'm gonna press P, and you're gonna see right there that a little flag shows up. This one, I like, I'm gonna press P. I'm gonna skip this photo. This bass, sure, why not? Press P. Nice sunset shot. We will, we'll use that fish, sure. Yeah, and we're gonna go through the rest of the photos here. Flag the ones we want. All right, our photos are flagged. Now we are gonna wanna select the flagged photos only. So right here you can see filter. We're gonna click on the flag and now those non-flagged photos are gonna disappear. So now we have 12 photos of the original 18 we started with. We're gonna now click develop and it's gonna flip over into the develop module it's called. You don't have to do the culling, you can just import all the photos and edit all of them, that is no problem. Click to the first one and we're gonna rotate it, okay? So you can do command and right close bracket. There's also some cropping and rotating options here if you want to resize your photo. Um, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. We're gonna click reset. That's our original size. Now we're gonna look at the presets on the left. Here, as you can see, I have hundreds, if not thousands of presets. I have bought and downloaded a ton of them. So that is kind of how I got my start and created some of these. I mean, you, you see what you like, you combine a couple, you tweak them, and this is what you end up with. So I have five different presets, and we're gonna kind of go through. I'll explain each one and what they're good for. 
and then I will edit these photos. So first up, we have Crystal. Crystal is nice for um, bright days. It is probably the least processing of any of my presets. Some of them, you use the preset and you'll see a pretty harsh change. This one isn't too much. It, it bumps the greens, bumps the blues. It's, it's nothing too wild. Next one is Great Gray. This one puts in a lot of gray. There's a lot of gray orange contrast. I like it for photos with a little more grit. Next, we have Orange Crush. This is my most used preset. Um, awesome for anything with some nice oranges, nice sunset photos. Really good for outdoorsy stuff, indoor, not as good. Then we have Thrive. This is heavy, heavy blues. It's good, but you need the right photo for it. So you'll learn kind of what works for it. And then lastly, we have Wallston. This one has a lot more of a film grain to it and um, just nice oranges and greens. Um, so as you can see right now, as I flip over all these photos, you know, they don't look good just hovering over top of it. So something that's important to remember, as you can see when I'm hovering over these different presets, a preset is not a one click fix. You need a good image to start off with and then you need to play with that preset beyond it. So for this one, I know Crystal is gonna work pretty good. And right there, that's pretty close. It's a little bit bright. The highlights are a little bit bright in the sky. I'm just gonna bring that down a bit, but right there, three clicks and we're done. We got a good photo. Next, we're gonna move on to the steelhead photo. Um, and we're gonna go through them. Wallaston, it looks good. It's a little more of a grainy look. It's not as punchy. I'm gonna click reset. It'll bring me back to normal. I'll scroll up. We got Thrive. As I said, that's heavy on the blues. It does not work in this situation. It, it looks cool, but I don't want the fish to look that unnatural. So we're gonna go up, orange crush. Nope, I could fix the white balance, but I still don't think it would look good. We're gonna go up to great gray. And this is the one that I had chosen for this picture. So we're gonna drop the exposure down quite a bit. And it just, it has amazing punch. Um, the reds and oranges are nice. As you can see, the hands are a little bit orange still. So what I can do is, and this is a little more advanced, I can go into these brushes and I could make the hands a little bit more blue or darker. So they're not showing up as much. Um, that's for another day, but there's so many tools in Lightroom that you can make the photo look exactly how you want. Next, we're onto this largemouth bass. And this photo is really dark. And something to be aware of is Lightroom is gonna work much, much better with raw photos. That is what these presets are created for. If you use a DSLR, um, you're taking a raw photo. And a raw photo is uncompressed. If you took a raw photo to Walmart to print, they wouldn't be able to print it. People don't know how to deal with raw photos. JPEG is what everybody deals with. So when I'm editing now, I'm using this raw photo, I'm doing my editing and it's gonna switch over to a JPEG when I export it. That'll be the final step. But as you can see, this photo is dark and in some situations you might be like, ah, oh, this photo's no good anymore. But with the magic of a raw photo and all the data it has, we can salvage it. So orange crush looks good on this one. Nice orange light. Um, it is a little orange, so I'm gonna pull back the white balance a bit. And this, all these sliders here are things you can play with. Um, right there, touch the exposure touch the white balance. Um, you know what, maybe I'll, you can add a little vignetting, a little, a little dark around the edge if you want. And that's a good photo. So we're gonna go on to the next. We're gonna keep cruising. Like I've said, some of these presets will work. Some of them you can use multiple. Let's say we want two different versions of this one. We're gonna try Orange Crush. Yeah, it's a little bit bright. We're gonna darken it. We'll play with some of these sliders here. This will get rid of the vignetting it's called on the edges. And right there, that's a cool looking photo. Let's say I wanna create another preset. We'll right click on the photo create virtual copy and then I can reset that one. So this is a way you can have multiple versions. And then if you have a client or a friend you want to show it to, it's like, okay, well, I got two versions now. Do you like version number one or version number two? And it's, it's just a good way to figure out what your style is, what you like. And we will keep going this one. I see some oranges in it. I can tell it's a sunset photo. I think orange crush is going to look good. We'll click on orange crush. Awesome. Let's, let's see what thrive would have looked like on it look like garbage, right? So these presets, it depends on the photo so much. Once you've used them a lot, you can kind of look at the photo and you'll be like, you know what? I bet you great gray looks good on that or I bet you orange crush. So the more you use Lightroom, the more you get comfortable and you figure out what works and what doesn't. Onto a photo of Mr. Weeb with a big old bluegill. Um, I want this one a little punchier. I want it to look a little more unique. So I'm gonna try great gray on it. Looking pretty good. You can see his fingers a little overexposed. The sky's a little overexposed. I'm gonna pull the highlights back. Once again, I'm gonna dip into the brush and I'm just gonna brush in his fingers there and darken them a little bit. Bring those highlights down. And right there, in 
20 seconds, you got a good photo. So Lightroom is so quick. You don't have to spend hours on a photo. If you want to do more manipulations and more complex stuff, that is where Photoshop is the place. And typically when you're on a shoot and you have a bunch of photos with similar light, with similar conditions, then that same preset's going to work all the way through. So both of these Aaron photos, great gray worked good on them. Now we've got, uh, we've got three or four photos here that have a lot of greens. So I'm going to select all of them. But if I hold in shift and then I click, I'm going to select three photos at once. I'm going to, I think Walston, I mean, these are Walston photos and I did name a preset Walston. So we're going to assume the Walston preset works pretty good. Click Walston and I'm going to click sync. And then you can choose all the things to click off. This is where it gets a little complex. We're going to go synchronize. And now all three of these photos got hit with the same preset at once. You still want to do your individual tweaks, but if you're batch editing from a huge photo shoot, um, it's just a great way to speed up your process. Last but not least, we have a couple pictures from the sky. I can tell this has a lot of blue and some, some greens, maybe a hint of orange. So we're going to try thrive. That's the one preset we haven't used. And right away you're like, Ooh, that looks, that looks bad. But the thing about the thrive preset, it is very sensitive to the white balance. So we're going to slide the white balance up a little warmer, closer to the orange, maybe bump the shadows a bit and looks like a cool photo. Our last one here, a shot taken out of the float plane, pretty cool shot. And I want that water to just pop. So I'm going to go to the thrive setting again and look at that. Let's look at the before and after that is insane. One click and it's done. I know I said it's not a one, one click fix. Obviously I picked the best photos for this example, but right there, one click, I can go through the other ones just to check again, but you know what? I think Thrive's gonna work for this one. Cool and punchy. Okay, so now I've got my photos edited. I've edited a couple photos with each preset to show you guys what works. Let's just, let's just export one photo time. Let's not make it too complicated. We're gonna click on that photo. We're gonna go up to file, export, I'm going to choose the folder. So I chose the folder already. It's called desktop edited photos. Now I'm going to go down file settings, JPEG. This is important. It is changing to a JPEG. Um, you can either choose quality one out of hundred percent or limit file size. If I'm just using a photo for web content, I'll often just limit the file size to 2000 K, which is two megabytes. That's a good size. If you're let's say printing on something big, or let's say you want to archive the photo and you're going to end up deleting the raws for down the road. Then what I might do is, not limit the file size, keep the quality at hundred percent. And then no matter what, you're going to get the best print possible metadata. You could have your copyright added into it. This is all more complex stuff. You probably don't need to worry about it. I'm going to click export. It's going to say show and finder. So once I export it, it should pop up right away. There we go. It popped up and there we have the final photo ready to go. So as you can see, all these presets are a little bit different and feel free to add and to make them your own because a lot of these presets I purchased from other people and I tweaked them and I made them unique. And now I have five that are my favorite that I'm wanting to share with you guys. So it can be a little intimidating at first, but just start experimenting with it. I hope these presets give you a little bit of a jump start. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this beginner tutorial into Lightroom. Hope it wasn't too complex. Uh, if you guys want to see more of these type of videos, let me know below please comment. And as well, tag me in the photos if you end up using the presets for, for your own editing. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time.